Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, video lecture, and we are covering the central nervous system. So let's go ahead and begin. All right, so I'm sorry. I'm getting my pen. Just a second, I know, right? Takes too long right now. There we go. So a uh, central nervous system is made of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, so on this diagram, you can see brain and spinal cord in a light uh, yellow and then dark yellow um, are nerves and um, other structures called ganglia. Those are part of the peripheral nervous systems that we will uh, cover in our next lectures. Right, so brain and spinal cord. Okay, so let's talk about brain. Um, the major part of your brain is a cerebrum. Right, so that's a bulk of your brain uh, shows over here. So that's a cerebrum. And a cerebrum is divided into hemispheres. So you have left and right hemispheres. Um, and they divided by this uh, fissure. And this is longitudinal fissure. Uh, but they also are held together by white matter right here. And this is called corpus callosum. Right, so a uh, longitudinal fissure divides your um, cerebrum into left and right hemispheres and corpus callosum, it's a connection between these two hemispheres. Now, if you look at the surface of a cerebrum, you will find cerebral cortex. It says over here, wrinkled portion, right? So that's the uh, superior part is cerebral cortex. Um, now, if you're going to look deep uh, uh, to the cerebral cortex, you will find a structure that is called basal nuclei. Um, so this is the collection of uh, gray matter. So it's shown uh, on this diagram over here. Uh, and this is for your um, Cognitive processing and also basal nuclei are important in, um, uh, in um, movement of your uh, body and your muscles. We also have a limbic uh, system that include limbic cortex. Um, so on this diagram here, uh, what is highlighted is part of limbic system and it's uh, responsible for emotion, memory and behavior. Right, so we have cerebral cortex right underneath. So cerebral cortex is gray matter. Underneath we have white matter and then embedded within white matter, we have basal nuclei and um, a limbic system, limbic system. And um, you know, they are gray matter again, right? And of course, um, some structure, let's say, um, uh, like those connections in between like phonics, for example, this is white matter as well. Uh, but the point is those are structures that are deep within your cerebrum. Okay, so let's look at the cerebral cortex. Um, now cerebral cortex is divided into lobes. So we have uh, five lobes um, and they um, showed here in a different color. So we have frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, that's four. And then uh, you really need to uh, kind of pull apart frontal and temporal to see this lobe inside. And this is insula. So here you have uh, uh, your five lobes. Um, now, what uh, separates those lobes uh, is a fissure or a uh, sulci. Um, so this sulcus over here is called central sulcus. Um, so it separates frontal from parietal. Right, then we have over here lateral sulcus. 
that separate uh, frontal, parietal, and occipital bone. Uh, we have parietal occipital sulcus that, as name uh, tells you, separate parietal and occipital lobes. Um, right. Then we have a longitudinal fissure that we cannot see on this diagram, but on the previous slide, and that separates right and left hemispheres. And we have transverse fissure that separates cerebrum from a cerebellum. So here's your cerebellum right there. So again, central sulcus, lateral sulcus, parietal occipital sulcus, um, and um, transverse uh, fissure. Now, also, if you look at the surface of cerebral cortex, you will see uh, ridges and grooves. Now, ridges or wrinkles, we call them gyri, right? So you can see this is one gyrus. So that's a ridge. This is another one. That's a gyrus. This is gyrus. So plural, we say gyri. And then we have those grooves, and this is called sulcus, or sulci um, is plural. And this allow you to increase surface area of the cerebral cortex. So imagine if the cortex would be flat, right? the surface area would be way smaller. So we have this convolution that increase the surface area and increase your amount of gray matter. As a result, increase your uh, cognitive function uh, and um, you know, your sensory function, motor functions, and you know, everything else. So you, you have relatively small uh, brain, but with a large surface area. Okay, so um, if, you, if you look at um, lobes and you think about their functions, um, the functions are interconnected. However, we do have a special part of cerebral cortex that is responsible for specific uh, perception or motor function, right? So uh, if you look over here, occipital lobe, and um, this, uh, the function, major function is visual perception. So here you see your occipital lobe, right, right there. And the dark blue, this part over here, show you primary visual cortex. This is where information from retina, and retina is found in your eyes, um, the information from retina received by this primary visual cortex. And then uh, adjacent to primary visual cortex, you have visual association area. So that's your vision. In a temporal lobe, you have auditory sensation. So here's your temporal uh, lobe, and you have your primary auditory cortex, right? So it would be right here. So that's a primary. Then you have auditory association cortex. And this is your hearing. In a, a parietal lobe, you have somata uh, sensation. Um, so here's um, your central sulcus over here, right? And this dark blue part is called post-central gyrus. And this is uh, somatosensory information. Um, this is the area that receives somatosensory information. Now, if you wonder what somatosensory information is, so that's the information that reaches your consciousness. Um, this is a part of your uh, somatic uh, nervous system. Um, so the sensations that you understand, right? And, um, and this is general sensation. So for example, temperature, touch, uh, vibration, a pain from your skin, uh, from your muscles, from your um, joints, Right, so that's the information, sensory information um, received by this primary somatosensory cortex. Right, so again, information from your skin, uh, from your muscles. Um, so somebody touching you, 
um, touching your arm, right? So this is where the information is uh, processed. Uh, somebody, um, you know, you touching something cold or hot, this is where information comes again to this area. Um, Right, so that's that's our primary somatosensory cortex. Now, vision goes to the occipital lobe. Hearing goes to temporal lobe. Now, in frontal lobe are your motor function. So, if you look at this dark uh, red area over here, so this one is uh, primary motor cortex. Now, um, that means that if you wanna move your skeletal muscles, this um, uh, signal will begin in this area, right? So um, the signal starts so uh, in your primary motor cortex. <clears throat> if you need to move your uh, fingers, your arms, your legs, even you know when you need to move muscles of your throat and so on, right? And if you look um, anterior to the primary motor cortex, we have pre-motor cortex, we also have um, frontal eye field. Um, so that's uh, the area that responsible for movement of your eyes, right? <clears throat> and um, um, I think we do have another um, slide to explain the rest um, of this diagram, but if not, we will get back over here. So let's see what we need to remember from this um, slide. So occipital lobe, visual perception, and we have primary visual cortex and visual association cortex, temporal lobe, auditory. So we have primary auditory and auditory association cortex. Parietal lobe, we have a somatosensory cortex and somatosensory association cortex. In the frontal lobe, we have motor cortex and a pre-motor cortex that really similar to association, we just don't call it this way, pre-motor cortex. And we have frontal eye field that allow you to move your eyes. Also this area over here, and interesting that this area only found in one hemisphere, usually in um, the left hemisphere, is called Broca's area. And Broca's area is responsible for our speech. So you can talk uh, thanks to this Broca's area. Right. Okay, so let me see if we have, oh no, we don't have uh, another slide. Then let's just continue using this one. Now, all these uh, light purple area here and here, right? All this purple area here, it's multimodal association cortex. That means it really involves in a, all uh, mentioned here, um, uh, sensory and motor uh, functions, right? So that's our multimodal association cortex. So for example, your frontal lobe uh, over here, this is where your executive uh, functions are. This is where you have your working memory, uh, solving complex multitask problem. And uh, this is where your personality is, uh, right? In this prefrontal cortex um, that, you know, make you who you are, right? So that's a prefrontal cortex. Um, pretty much all this area right there. Um, now, another area right here, and um, this is our Wernicke's area, also the same as Broca's area, found only in one hemisphere, usually a left hemisphere, and this area allow you to understand speech. So when somebody is talking to you, uh, this area fires, right? So that's where... Um, you know, we have activity, a uh, neural activity when somebody talking to you and uh, you understand the speech. And this area is active when you are talking. Now, uh, you can imagine if somebody has a stroke and stroke is a cere cerebrovascular accident. So when blood vessels are uh, either ruptured or clawed, blocked, but uh, area, some area of brain dies, 
And if stroke, uh, for example, happens in a Broca's area, patient will have problem uh, speaking. If stroke happen in a Wernicke's area, the patient would have problem uh, understanding speech and the written language as well, written texts, right? Okay, I think that's uh, pretty much everything that we wanted to cover. Ah, yeah, uh, I didn't cover over here your uh, um, taste, and your taste is in insula. So remember, insula is a nasal lobe um, that is deep uh, to the frontal and uh, temporal lobe. So that's your uh, gustatory cortex. Uh, subcortical structure that we uh, mentioned briefly, right? Those um, basal nuclei, uh, nuclei, for example. So we call them also subcortical nuclei. Um, and um, so you can see over here. So we have cortex shown kind of in a dark color. So that's a gray matter. Underneath the cortex, this is white matter. And then what show here in a blue color, those are gray matter as well. So those are our subcortical nuclei, like a, um, striatum or um, um, caudate and putamen, uh, together they call striatum, or globus pallidus over here, right? Those are our uh, subcortical nuclei. Um, and um, we um, uh, believe that um, those nuclei are um, uh, responsible for our memory. That's why when people have Alzheimer's disease, they, uh, they might have damage in, in this area of the brain. Uh, subcortical nuclei are also important in memory and emotion because we have a structure hippocampus and amygdala. So hippocampus for memory, amygdala for emotions. And it's also movement and control, caudate, putamen, and globus pallidus. So over here, all these three that's involved in the control of your movement, right? Um, so the point over here, and they produce acetylcholine and uh, augment cortical processes. So that means they um, kind of uh, uh, enhance your cortical processes, right? That happen in the cortex. Um, so again, we have gray matter, that's your cortex. This is where your consciousness is. So you understand uh, uh, your sensation, um, you uh, consciously make decision and not only decision, yeah, including decision what to eat for breakfast, and including your decision to move your arms and legs and walk and talk and understand language and uh, see uh, objects and hear uh, speech and understand speech. That's all your cortex, right? But underneath the cortex, you have gray matter again. And those gray matter is important in your, uh, um, again, in your uh, memory, emotions, uh, augment your cortical processes, movement control. Um, so that was our cerebrum. Um, and we said the cerebrum has cortex and subcortical structure. Now let's look at diencephalon. Um, so um, diencephalon is um, the structure that showed here in a dark purple, uh, lighter purple, and either you know part of the uh, posterior pituitary gland over here is also part of diencephalon. Um, okay, so uh, through the uh, so you have let's start with this. You have thalamus, and thalamus is this structure right here. And so you have two thalami, and they connect it through intrathalamic adhesion or intrathalamic mass right here. Right? So you have thalamus and you have hypothalamus. So hypothalamus is this part over here. And um, sensory information, it would says over here through brain. So sensory information goes through the thalamus 
And what Salomos does, it conveys it into appropriate part of the cerebral cortex. So, you know, maybe this goes over here information, this information goes here. So sensory information, this information goes right there, right? So that's what it says through brain. Uh, and um, the only sensory information that does not go through um, um, thalamus and go straight to the cortex is olfactory information. Um, right, so olf olfactory means you can smell stuff and it, it will actually go straight to your um, uh, temporal lobe and then go to the thalamus. Now the thalamus, that's what it says, relay center, uh, all sensory information except smell, and it processes information into appropriate part of the cortex. Now, hypothalamus shown here in a dark purple, it's uh, very important uh, for your homeostasis, for your autonomic nervous system, endocrine system, and regulates anterior pituitary gland. Uh, so for example, homeostasis of body temperature. So uh, hypothalamus um, regulate your internal uh, body temperature. Hypothalamus releases some hormones that uh, stimulate pituitary gland. So hypothalamus re uh, regulate your pituitary gland. And posterior pituitary is actually part of the nervous system and it secretes its own uh, endocrine hormones. Now we're gonna move to brain stem. So let me just remind you. So we, cover, uh, we covered cerebrum and uh, we mentioned cerebral cortex and subcortical uh, nuclei, um, right? Like a basal nuclei, limbic system. Um, limbic system has cortex as well. We call it limbic cortex. Then we cover diencephalon. So what's shown over here in the purple. So that's a diencephalon. Now we're moving to brain stem. So the brain stem is actually um, the part of a brain that's shown here in green color, and it's made of three parts. So it's made of midbrain, uh, pons, so those are pons, and uh, medulla oblongata, the most inferior part of the brain stem. So midbrain, a coordination of sensory information, it also has a visual auditory and somatosensory uh, centers. But uh, so it means your visual information, uh, your hearing, and uh, for example, your touch, they go through the midbrain. Uh, but whatever goes, uh, and especially this part on the, uh, on the posterior side um, called uh, corpora quadrigemina, but whatever received by your midbrain doesn't reach your consciousness. For you to understand your visual information, it must um, reach your cortex in the occipital lobe, but it can give you some reflexes, like visual reflexes, auditory reflexes. Now, pons and medulla, they have cardiovascular center, respiratory center, so they regulate your uh, heart rate, your um, respiratory rate, and cranial nerves um, uh, connect, to, uh, so, so we have cranial nerves that connect to central nervous system uh, through the brain stem. And so that means we have both sensory and motor output, right? So we have, for example, you know, uh, nerves that emerge from the brain stem or maybe a sensory nerves attached to brain stem and sensory, um, so you will have sensory input and motor output through the uh, brainstem, right? So again, so we have cerebrum, uh, we have diencephalon, and we have brain stems that is made of midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Um, we really cover just the basic. Uh, neuroanatomy is so complex topics that it would take us probably the whole semester just to cover anatomy of brain. That we, of course, have only one lecture to do it. Um, okay, so now, um, so now we look in, you know, into these parts of brain stem a little bit deeper. So, for example, midbrain, right over here. 
that is the most superior part of brain stem. Uh, so it's in between thalamus and pons, and it has tectum and tegmentum. Uh, so uh, kind of anterior part is tegmentum, and posterior part is called tectum. Uh, tectum includes um, what we call colliculi. So if you see those bumps over here, right? Um, so those are superior colliculi, and those two bumps are inferior colliculi. Uh, and all four of them make structures that is called corpora quadrigemina, and it's located in the tectum region. In tegmentum, it continues with gray matter of brain stem and receives and sends information from cranial nerve. Right, so cranial nerves uh, will bring sensor information and send out more information for, uh, uh, through uh, tegmentum. Okay. Let me get to the next slide. Um, so over here, we can see a uh, midbrain um, in a cross section, right? So, and you can see the, uh, this area that is tectum, and this is area over here that is uh, tegmentum. Let's see. Um, so that's going to be this anterior part over here and over here. Um, now, um, in a cross section, um, what you can see, you can see cerebral aqueduct. Uh, so that's a channel and inside you will have um, cerebrospinal fluid. Um, you will have um, this very um, prominently seen uh, nucleus called red nucleus. Um, this area over here is called a substantia nigra. And um, uh, substantia nigra um, secretes lots of dopamine. And this, um, the, those um, neurons are damaged in a patient who has um, Parkinson's disease. And red nucleus also important in coordination of uh, motor movement. Um, right, so you can see this, this part, so that's the anterior part or ventral part is called cerebral peduncles. All right, so what else uh, we need to cover over here? Um, yeah, and um, this is called reticular formation. All right, so let's, um, let's get back for a second. Um, so this is our mid-sagittal or lateral view of the midbrain, right? Where we have our tegmentum and tectum, and this is cross section, right? So now you have tegmentum in the dorsal part, and you have your tectum over here, and then those are your um, cerebral peduncles, uh, your substantia nigra, red nucleus, and cerebral aqueduct. Um, now, uh, inferior to midbrain, we have pons. So you can see cross section of a pond. You see the uh, now, instead of cerebral aqueduct, we have a force ventricle. And we will cover those ventricles. We will see what those ventricles are. Um, then, um, again, you, um, you can see different um, um, nuclei, right? Oh, I'm sorry, this is, th those are actually uh, tracked. So those are axons. So those are axons. Those are darker stuff are um, gray matter, right? So this, you know, gray matter, those are white matter. So you have gray and white matter because still your pawns are part of the um, central nervous system. You can see um, how cranial nerves are attached. Um, to a pawns, like for example, trigeminal nerve. So it has a nucleus of trigeminal nerve, and then we have axons over here. So uh, pawns are anterior surface of brain stem, and it has white and gray matter, and main connection uh, to the cerebellum and uh, uh, connection uh, to the cerebellum and brain. Uh, I mean, Cere connects cerebellum and is your brain, 
right? Even uh, pawns is your brain. Um, so it just, um, just connects, major connection to cerebral cortex, I would say. And of course it connects uh, medulla to the pawns and it's both sensory and motor information will travel through pawns. Okay, so now uh, medulla shown over here. So you can see again, you can see collection of gray matter, collection of white matter. And um, when you see gray matter, that means you will have cell bodies of neurons. So just watch the previous uh, lecture where I explained what gray matter is, what white matter is, um, right? So you can see you know, how they arrange over here. We have lots of um, nuclei of cranial nerves. Right, we have a reticular formation. Uh, and in the reticular formation, uh, we have axons that um, you know, cross uh, from left side to right side. So those are crossing fibers over here. Um, so as I said, very complicated, but what we wanna remember about medulla is that it has respiratory center, it has cardiovascular center and at autonomic reflex centers. Um, reticular formation um, that's shown right here, right? So that's really like a lot of um, structures. Um, also um, it plays important role in a sleep in and a wakefulness, right? That's reticular formation. If you go, if you go to a previous, uh, you also um, will see uh, part of the reticular formation over here in pawns. So pawns and medulla, they both have a uh, reticular formation that important for your sleep cycle and for your ability to stay uh, alert and uh, consciousness and awake, right? That's what reticular formation is. Cardiovascular center, cardiac center, adjust force and rate of heart, heart contraction. Vasomotor center, adjust blood vessels diameter for blood pressure regulation. Okay, and then, um, so let's um, again, uh, look at this brain stem that we have over here, including midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. And now very quickly, uh, cerebellum over here. Uh, so cerebellum is 11% of brain mass. It's a dorsal to the pons and medulla. And some subconsciously provides precise timing and appropriate patterns of skeletal muscle contraction. So cerebellum is important for your um, balance, for your equilibrium and appropriate uh, movement. Cerebellum also receives sensory information from your muscles and from your joints. And it's responsible for sensation that is called proprioception. So you know where your uh, body parts are. So you know position of your arms or your legs, even if you don't see them. That's what proprioception is. Now cerebellum is divided into anterior lobe, a larger posterior lobe and floca nudia lobe, floca, flocula nodular lobe, right there. So that's a uh, that's a word, huh? Flocula nodular lobe, right in this area, and uh, cerebellum also has cerebellar cortex and the white matter. So white matter of the cerebellum is called arbor vitae. And um, so it also has these convolutions that we called fovea instead of uh, gyri or sul sulci. Um, so that's um, what says over here. So it has two hemispheres connected by vermis. Uh, I don't think we can see vermis over here. Each hemisphere has three lobes, anterior, posterior, and flocular nodule. And folia is uh, our gyri, but they um, oriented transversely. And arbor vitae is distinct tree-like pattern of the cerebellar white matter. So that's a really, really very beautiful pattern over here. 
And, um, you know, when we have dissection in class, you will see, um, you know, this arbor vitae, very distinct um, uh, feature of the cerebellum. Okay, so let me, uh, let me uh, look over here. And uh, yeah, maybe I will um, stop my recording right here. Um, and I will record another lecture where we cover the spinal cord because it did get um, kind of long um, and really kind of complicated, right? But let's, before we um, uh, finish this lecture, let's go ahead and look at the parts of adult brain. So human adult brain is made of cerebrum, diencephalon, brain stem and cerebellum. Now cerebrum has cerebral cortex. So all the information that reaches your cerebral cortex and all the impulses that originate from cerebral cortex, they, they is a reach your consciousness or they, you consciously start those uh, actions. For example, if you see something and you understand what you think, right? That means this information reaches your cortex. If you smell something and you do understand what you smell, it reaches your consciousness. If you wanna move your fingers, that information begins and starts at the cerebral cortex. Uh, also, this cortex is divided into lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, and in insula. And a temporal, um, oh, sorry, occipital uh, is for visual information, but we, we do have association area, right? That, um, that process all type of information. We're just talking about primary visual cortex, right? So where information from your retina goes first, uh, occipital lobe, uh, temporal lobe, uh, your auditory information, uh, frontal lobe, um, well, um, you have a lot of motor cortex, primary motor cortex, and um, uh, uh, the premotor cortex. Uh, so uh, motor information originate from your frontal lobe plus pre, um, uh, this prefrontal cortex. This is where your uh, memory, is, uh, this is where your working memory, uh, your decision-making, when you study for your test, this is a part of the brain that is responsible for those um, actions, right? Um, and um, gustatory information, so taste go to the insula. Now, parietal lobe, it's a lot of sensory, somatosensory information that is received by uh, your parietal lobe and specifically um, postcentral gyrus. All right, uh, also deep within the cerebrum, we have subcortical uh, nuclei that um, help you to process sensory information and um, uh, initiate and uh, continue movement of your body parts, right? So when you walk, when you uh, move your um, hands and arms and so on. Uh, now, diencephalon have um, thalamus, and thalamus receives all the sensory information and it, it conveys sensory information into different parts of your cerebral cortex. You have hypothalamus that is uh, extremely important in a homeostasis. Plus it's also release um, endocrine hormones and regulates your pituitary gland that is right over here. Uh, then your midbrain is, oh, I'm sorry, your brain stem is responsible for uh, you know, basic function supporting life, like your breathing, like your heartbeat, like swallowing. Um, so that's our basic function that, uh, you know, keep you alive, right? So, and it's include midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Now in the medulla oblongata, we have a cardiovascular center. We have respiratory center. And that's the one that regulate your heart rate and your respiratory rate. And cerebellum over here, 
right? That is a posterior and inferior part of the brain. It's posterior to your brainstem and cerebellum is responsible for your movement, for your balance. Um, also receive uh, information about proprioception. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I know, as I said, uh, neuroanatomy is a very complex topic. Um, thank you for watching this video and I hope it was helpful.